and we start the lesson. We discuss about operations with uh, basic types. And we stop on uh, comparison operation. We discuss about arithmetic operations in details, but these operations are more or less, uh, I think, understandable, and you use it in uh, real life and in, uh, in other subjects, but comparison a uh, little bit differs. So you can uh, apply these operations to compare two values. May these values may be two variables or two expressions, but the result of comparison is logical. So the result can be either true or false. And there is a special type that corresponds to logical value. This type is called Boolean or just bool. And there are only two possible values for this type, true or false. And false corresponds to zero, true corresponds to one. So we can use these values to denote zero, uh, true and false. Zero for false, one for true. And result of comparison can be used in other expression. Of course, from the first point of view, such expressions looks very strange, but it's correct from the point of view of compiler, from the point of view of C language, because the result of comparison is just a number, zero or one. For example, here, if B, as far as B is greater than A, the result of this comparison will be one. And new value of the variable C, will be three. Let me show you these examples in Visual Studio. Suppose that I declare two variables, A equals two, B equals two, three, and I can output to the screen, the result of comparison A greater than B. This result will be either true or false, zero or one. As far as actually A is smaller than B, the result of this comparison will be false. So we should see zero on the screen. Yes, we see zero. Let me output here also. The message result, result equals to zero. This value can be assigned for the special type of variables called boolean or just bool. Let me declare 
the variable result and let's assign a greater than b is the result of the comparison to this value the result now will be zero false and if i output this result to the screen we will see zero If I change the sign here, the sign of comparison, the result will be true, and we will see one on the screen. The result is one. But also, I can use the uh, predefined constants, true and false. As you see, Visual Studio shows you this word in blue color. It means that false is a reserved word, K word. I can use false only to denote the false result of comparison. I cannot create a variable with the name false. False means zero. And we will see on the screen zero now. Well, In C language, we can construct a complex logical expressions using classical logical operations such as negation, alternation, and conjunction. In other words, we can say that conjunction, conjunction corresponds to operation AND, alternation corresponds to or negation corresponds to not. And these operations are denoted in C language as exclamation mark, two vertical lines, and two ampersand sign. The result of logical expression equals either zero or false, uh, zero or one. It means false or true. Here I just I write your as example some complex expression. But let's start maybe from the more simple examples. I will show you these examples in Visual Studio. Suppose that I declare uh, several variables. I just can copy this from my presentation. The variables A, B, and C with their values 2, 3, and 8. And now let's construct a complex expression, complex logical expression. A smaller than B and B smaller than C. And means that both of these Both of these uh, comparisons, both of these operations, both of these logical values must be true to have a result equals to true. What we will see on the screen in this case 
a smaller than b and b smaller than c. We will see true because actually a smaller than b and b smaller than c. Let's check it. We will see one. One corresponds to true. Let's change the sign of comparison here. A smaller than B and B greater than C. A smaller than B, the result is true. But B smaller than C, B greater than C, the result is false. So we have true and false. And the final result will be false. Zero. We will see zero on the screen as a result. OK. Let's change the sign of the operation. Let's change it from AND to OR. A smaller than B or B greater than C. When I apply operation or alternation, it means at least one of these values should be true to have a result true. B greater than C gives us false, but A smaller than B is true. In this case, the result will be true. The result of the operation or alternation will be false only if both of the operands are false. For example, like this, A greater than B or B greater than C. It means both of these values. Both of these results are false, and we will see false zero as the final result. This is the very important when we should when we should write uh, some large complex com uh, large complex. Uh, logical expression. OK, and the last. Operation that I want to show you. Is the operation. Not. Okay, let's start again from the simple example. A greater than B. The result is false. Because actually A is smaller than B. But let's apply the operation not exclamation mark not a greater than b here in this case a greater than b gives us false but negation not gives us true not false equals true. And we will see one as a result. I can apply operation not just for predefined constant true. What is what is not true? False. The result will be false. Zero. Not false. Not false means true. We will see one on the screen as a result. Let's come back to the presentation and let's look to this expression. What we will have here, this complex logical expression. We have operation M. 
that has two operands, not a greater and smaller than b, and the result of comparison, b square greater or equals to c. Let's start from this one. What is the value of b? b is 3, but b square will be 9. 9 greater than 8 is true. What we will have here? a smaller than b is true, but after that I should apply operation not. Not a, a smaller than b. The result would be false. So we have false and true gives us false. And the result of this expression will be false, zero. Let's check it. I just copy this expression from my presentation to Visual Studio. Okay. And just copy this expression and let's check the result. The result is false, zero. Do you have any questions about logical operations and logical expressions? No. Very good. Very good. Okay, let's look to the next operation. I skip this conditional operation. We consider it later when we discuss about the if and else statement. Maybe we, we consider it next week. And now I can say that we consider a lot of operations. These operations are arithmetic operations logical operations, comparison operations, and these type of operations, I skip it now, but we consider it later, if we have enough time for this. I just, I copy it here. So these operations are not very useful in uh, real programming. It's included in uh, C language maybe for to to have to have opportunity to write very very fast very efficient programs, but in in real life these operations are used not very often. And for correct calculation of the result of the expression. We need to define the priorities of this operation. In this table, in this table, you may see the list of all operations and list of its priorities. And these uh, operations are sorted from the highest level of priority to the lowest level. So you see that in high highest level high level of priority, the first pr level of priority uh, have a parenthesis function and operations plus plus and minus minus in the postfix form. The next level of priority prefix plus plus prefix minus minus and bitwise operations. Next level, operations. 
multiplication, division, and getting the remand. Next, fourth level, binary to two place operations plus and minus. Uh, after that, shift operations, we didn't consider it yet. We'll discuss about it later. Next level of priority, comparison operations. Uh, smaller, greater, smaller or equal, less than or equal, uh, greater than or equal. Then equals, not equals. And some portion of bitwise logical operation and logical operations like and and or that we just consider. Uh, what does it mean? What, what do these priorities mean? It means that if you write in Visual Studio some complex expression like this, I can delete these brackets because, because I can remove it actually. And this, uh, the result of this comparison will be the same because multiplication has the highest priority as comparison. So first, this operation will be carried out. And only after this, comparison. And only after comparison, logical end will be carried out, and so on. And if you write some numerical expression like this, A plus B times C, You should remember that multiplication has highest priority in comparison with the addition. And first, this operation will be carried out. To compute A plus B first, you should enclose it in brackets. The brackets change the priorities, and it, from this point of view, I can say that the uh, parenthesis has a highest priority. And first, the expression in parenthesis will be carried out. At one of the previous lessons, I show you that the symbols in C has codes, and all of the symbols are um, written in so-called code table. And any symbol has its own code, its own number. So, when we compare symbols, actually we compare its codes. The codes that correspond to these symbols in so-called code table or ASCII code table. And if we compare two symbols, some symbols A and B, and uh, the result of this comparison will be true. The symbol A is greater than the symbol B if the code of the symbol A is greater than the code of the symbol B. For example, this expression gives us the value 1, true, because the symbol Q is a code larger than the symbol P. 
let me again show you this in Visual Studio. Let's compare two symbols, A and B. Or uh, uh, let's use here uh, greater than A greater than B. In the code table, all the symbols are written in alphabetical order from A to Z. That's why the code of the symbol A actually is less than the code of the symbol B. And the result here, it should be false. Yes, we will see false zero. If I change the sign of comparison, we will see one, true. If I use here the this operation equals what we will see on the screen, we will see false because uh, A doesn't equal to B. We will see false. Uh, let's run this program. Yes, yeah, so we will see zero, false. But what happens in this case? A plus one equals to B. Again, all of the symbols are written in the code table, one after another. And the code of the symbol B follows from the code of the symbol A. That's why A plus one is B, the code of the symbol B. So now we will see on screen the result true one. If I write here C, I should write here two. A plus two equals to C. The result is one. Again, pay your attention that something written in quarters, single, single quarters, means symbol, character, char A. It's not a variable A that I declare here. It's a character, char. Well, uh, comparison of uh, strings, again, I, I want to skip this slide because we didn't consider strings right now. I just uh, mentioned that the strings in C are compared so-called lexicographically, like the words in dictionary. It compared symbol by symbol like the word in dictionary. And in this case, for example, the string B, string or just uh, string, these two symbols B, 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 will be greater than the strings of the two symbol A. We can see it right later. Well, and now I want to discuss in details about such simple from the first point of view operation like assignment. Of course, you, you use assignment 
on practice, you use it when you write a programs. I use assignment when I show you some examples. But this operation is not so simple as it seems from the first point of view. Now let's consider it in details. Assignment operation provides for changing the value of a variable. This is the most simple form. We should write expression as the right hand side and the name of the variable as the left hand side of this operation. Such construction is called a simple assignment operation. Here we see some example. And in this case, I want to stress that here the variable C is used in both parts of the operation. But in the right part, its value equals to 4, the value of the variable C before the operation. And in the right part, C equals to 10, the value of this variable after the operation. Again, let's copy this example to Visual Studio. Let's output the value of the variable C to the screen. Well, again, here, this variable participates both in right and left part of the expression, but in the right hand side, this value C equals to four. In the left hand side, the value of the variable C equals to 10. So before, before the operation, the value of C equals to 4. After the operation, the value of C equals 10. Well, uh, it's uh, very simple, but you should remember that the old value of the va variable will be lost after assignment. And if you need it later in your program, you should remember it, remember the old value in some another variable before performing the assignment operation. Or but more complex question is related with the compatibility of types of the variable and expression. In a more simple case, the most useful case, the rule is that the types of the left hand side variable and right, right hand side expression must be the same. But sometimes these <clears throat> the, the, the data types are different. In some cases, compiler can transform the types automatically. For example, if in the right hand side I have a real number and in the left hand side I have a integer number, the fractional part of the real number will be truncated. Let's show you this example in Visual Studio. 
let me declare here. Some real number X, for example, 4.4. And let me write the assignment. Something like this A equals to X. And let's output the value of A to the screen. What happens here? The value of X equals 4.4 and X has a type double. In this case, compiler automatically converts double to int and truncates the fractional part. We will see on the screen new value of A4. But Also, compiler outputs you the message warning that this assignment converts double to int and it possible loss of data. This warning you can see in the output message window or you can open the error list. The errors here is indicated with a red circle and warnings are indicated with a yellow triangle. Warning is not a mistake, it's not an error. The program will be correct, but compiler just warns you that it may be a mistake here when you lose some data when you convert double to int. So in this page, you can see the list of errors. In this, this page, the list of warnings. But in some cases, compiler cannot convert the data type from one to another. And in this case, compiler outputs you a mistake. For example, we didn't, we didn't consider this type yet, but I just, as example, give you for example, uh, let me declare the pointer to integer p. And in this case, compiler outputs you a mistake that p cannot be assigned to a because these values has a different types. And if I try to run this program, compiler output you the message that it cannot convert from the data type pointer to int. It's just an example of, of the situation when the compiler cannot convert one data type to another automatically. Okay, let's switch to the presentation. Well, the first type of assignment that we consider is a simple assignment. But the assignment operation can be multiplied. I can assign the value of the one expression to several variables in one assignment operation. In this case, uh, this, this line is carried out from right to left. It means that the value of this expression will be assigned sequentially to these, 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 all of these variables. For example, here, the value of this expression 
sinus pi x plus t will be assigned to the variables a, b, and c. Let's show you here this in Visual Studio. A, b, c, for example, equals to 10. Now, the value 10, or even I can just, I, I can write here an expression, for example, 1 plus 9. The value of this expression, the result of this expression, will be assigned to all of the variables from right to left. And the new value of the variable A will be 10. Well, and let me skip this slide and turn to this one. We come back to the previous slide later. The very important operation is so-called modified assignment operation. Suppose that this sign this sign denotes some operation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and so on. And very often we should write this operation, this such a line in our, our program. Let me put here on the semicolon. Such line that new value of some variable equals to old value of some ver of this variable. Then we apply the separation and the value of some expression. It, ca it can look something like this. Uh, for example, a equals to a plus b plus c for example like this or even b times c okay so new value of the variable a equals to old value of the variable a then sign of the operation and some expression b plus c for example or b times c what will be the new value of the variable a here? b times c equals to 12. 12 plus 2 equals to 14. New value of a will be 14. But v separation is used very often. And there exists a short notation for this operation. Name of the variable, sign of the operation, then equals sign and the expression. These two lines correspond to their to the same action, to the same result. I can rewrite this line as a plus equals, or I just comment this line to look in it. Well, this line and this line are the same. A plus equals B times C means a equals to a plus b times c. We will see the same result on the screen. In this operation, I can use the previous value of the variable a. a plus equals a times c. What does it mean? Here, 
in the right hand side of this expression, I will use old value of the variable a. a plus a times c. This is the meaning of this line. a times c is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. So we will see 10 on the screen. 10 as a result, 10 as a new value of the variable a. And I can use a lot of operations in the, uh, this style. Plus equals, minus equals, star equals, slash equals for division, and so on. Name of the variable, slash equals, and the expression. It means that new value of this variable equals to all value over the result of this expression. Example, C equals to C divide equals C over A. What we have here? C over A, 4 over 2, and 4 over 2 again, we will have 2 as a result. And if I output the new value of the variable C on the screen, I will see I'll see two. Well, do you have any questions about modified assignment operations? No questions. Okay, and the last point that I want to show you is that modified assignment operation can be used in generalized assignment expression like this. Several modified assignment operations. I just show you as it's uh, as example because uh, in real life in real programs uh, such expressions are used not very often. This complicated assignment will be calculated from right to left in following order. First, the new value of the variable number n will be calculated. The right, we start from right to left, new value of the variable number n. After that, new value of the variable number n minus 1, and so on. Let's consider this example. x equals to 5, 25 y equals to minus 5 and x plus equals y times equals 2. How this, how this, uh, the result of this expression will be computed? First, we consider this one. y times equals 2 the new value of the variable y will be minus 10. After that, minus 10 will be considered as a result 
as the right-hand side of this expression, x plus equals minus 10. And new value of the variable x will be 15. After this operation, new value of the variable y will be minus 10, and a new value of the variable x will be 15. Well, and in some cases, we, we can write uh, several assignment operations separated with commas. It's called composed assignment, and actually you use it in a declarative statement when you write uh, several assignment operation separated with commas. This assignment are performed successfully from left to right. Well, uh, the next point that I want to talk about is our, our uh, statements. Statements in programming, like such statements like operations and expressions, set a certain sequence of actions for the computer. The difference between statements and expressions consists in the following that the statement is a complete sentence of a language, but the expression is not, is not complete. It means that when you write something without semicolon, it's just an expression. But if you add a semicolon in the end, this line becomes a statement, a complete sentence of the language. I can write here, for example, just C plus one and without semicolon, it will be incomplete sentence of the C language. But if I put here a semicolon, this incomplete expression becomes a statement, complete expression, complete sentence of the language. This program, from the point of view of compiler, is correct. But what will we see on the screen if I run this program? C plus one and output C to the screen. What we will see as a result? The result, the new value of the variable C will be 4. Let's check. It doesn't change. The value of C will be 4. I apply operation C plus 1 and C equals to 4. Why? Because C plus 1, it doesn't change the value of the variable C. To change the value of the variable C, I must apply assignment operation. I must change the value of the variable C using assignment operation. C equals to C plus 1. Only in this case, the value of the variable C will be changed. And we will see on the screen five. When you write in your program just C plus one or C plus two or 
c plus any other number or minus any other number, it doesn't matter. C will have the same value for But this is a complete statement of the C language. The program is correct. And semicolon must be written in the end of the statement. All of the statements in C language may be divided into header statement, declarative statements, and computational statements. Header statements describe the header of the function in the program. Declarative statements describe information object of the program. It declares. So this is a declarative statement. I declare three information objects, integer numbers A, B, and C. This is a declarative statement. Computational statements carried out some operations with data. This is a computational statement. Computational statement may be classified as a simple statements, composed statements, and a complex statements. The empty statement consisting of a semicolon only is the simplest example of simple statement. Well, again, this is the very important that semicolon, semicolon is a property that uh, corresponds to their complete statement. Now, I write here empty statement, just a semicolon, and it's correct. If I compile this program, compiler outputs me uh, no mistakes, no errors. Of course, it does. Th this semicolon does nothing. It's just empty statement. I can put here the identifier of the variable, and it's also be a uh, correct statement. C and the semicolon. It's correct. I can compile this program, but of course it does nothing. Maybe the simplest case of a statement that carried out some useful operation is a unary expression. Name of the variable and sign of the operation. For example, a plus plus or b minus minus. Let me write here plus plus c plus plus. Now we will see on the screen five. And the most known type of a simple statement is assignment. It assign left the value from, sorry, not left, of course, right. Uh, it assigns the value from the right part to the value of the left part, of the, the left-hand side variable. Again, assignment must ends with a semicolon. Very important notion in C language is a so-called compose statement. A sequence of two or more statements following one after another may be united in a one compose statement, or also it's called block by means of a braces. I can enclose enclosed any part of my program in braces and this part will be considered as a one statement one 
composed statement. And inside composed statement, I can write declarative or computational statement. The semicolon before the closing bracket is obligatory, but after the semicolon, the sorry, after the brace, after this closed brace, semicolon is optional sign. Let's show you the example. I can declare and I can write this C inside these braces. I can move here some declarative statement, and it also this program will be correct. But look, look here. If I move here, if I move here, declarative statement int program becomes incorrect. Why? It outputs a mistake error that C is undefined. I move declarative statement where I declare the variable C inside the brackets. And this C is outside. So it means that the variable C is declared inside this composed statement. And I can use it only inside this statement. <laughs> Look to another strange example. Let me declare C equals to zero. The program becomes correct. <laughs> program is correct. And what we will see on the screen? We will see zero because this C and this C will be considered as a different variables. This variable C belongs to the main function, and this variable C is a local variable. It can be accessible only inside these brackets. It will be very important when we consider conditional statements, loops, and so on. Well, actually, and finally, I can say that uh, if a statement is included into another statement, the container statement is called complex. This situation takes place for conditional statement or loop statements, for example. We will consider this statement. Uh, these uh, statements, conditional statement and loop statement on the next lesson. Well, our time is over. Do you have any questions about the operations and expressions? I will send you the link to the video file later today and next week. We will discuss about conditional statement if and else. Let me stop recording now.